Hey there, Kingsley here. Thanks for joining me on this video broadcast. Today, we'll be unpacking the topic of breaking free from the narcissist and take back control. In, in, uh, in this video, we'll be talking about also five harmful outcomes that you could experience if you're living with a narcissist and, and how you can take back control even when dot, dot, dot. So I'll fill in the dot, dot, dot in a few minutes because I want to be able to unpack that all in one and so you can hear all of what I have to say at one point. Now, I know that if you are one of those personalities that are looking in and you're saying, Kingsley, I, I see this shirt, it says limited on top and you're wondering, is that all it says? Just to kind of put your mind to rest if that's where you're wondering and not be distracted. My shirt simply says limited edition uh, edition. So if in case you're wondering, that's what it says. I know some people can easily get distracted and their mind is like, they're so focused on that and they can't really listen to what I want to say. And so I want to take that out of the way, right? Take that out of the way so you can hear all that we have to talk about in this video. Now, here's what I find that when you are experiencing, if you're experiencing a, a spouse who you consider or may find that they have narcissistic tendencies. Now, if you want to hear more that I've said about narcissism and why I think it's an overused word, you may want to listen to my last video entitled Married to a Nar Narcissist. I'll share that with the link in the in the description below this video. But I also make sure that you, you um, not miss that because it helps to understand that I'm not somehow labeling your partner as you may be a narcissist. But I do know that there's some spouse that can be narcissistic in their behavior and could possibly be a narcissist. So I'm not in any way minimizing what you're experiencing and you may have come up with that term for a reason. So I want to make sure I acknowledge that right up front. Now, I know that if you have a spouse who is that way, it can be challenging. It's almost like you're constantly walking on eggshells, trying to avoid triggering their anger or their manipulation, or their deflection, or turning things back on you and blaming you. It's not easy. And how I do I know that? Because I have worked with so many people and listened to so many stories that I have heard that quite often. But I believe there are still ways to cope with that narciss narcissistic partner and even find joy and happiness and fulfillment, as I'll share with you in this video broadcast even in that very difficult relationship that you find yourself in. Um, it's, it's tough. I, 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 can't, I can't even begin to imagine what it must be like. And, and these living with this person can lead to what I believe is mental and emotional and sometimes physical harms that can affect your life in, in many, many ways. And I'm going to share with you some strategies that are very practical strategies and actionable that can help you take back control and lead, as I mentioned before, a joyful and fulfilled life, even when your relationship is what it, it really is. So if you're ready to take control, even without your narcissistic partner knowing, then stay tuned for some valuable insight and tips. Now, if you're wondering and hearing me for the first time and wondering who I am, uh, who is this person speaking on this topic? Let me just say that I'm Kingsley Grant and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist and certified relationship coach. And I make marriages happier again. I help spouses, couples to make marriages happier again. Now I've counseled hundreds and, and coached hundreds of couples over the past several years and having been married for almost four decades, I think I'm a bit more, a bit qualified to talk about topics like this one from a professional, especially this topic, more of a professional than a personal experience. But I've heard so many different stories and worked directly with couples who have identified one of their spouse who in some cases have been diagnosed as a narcissist. So I really have had some experience in this um, area as well. And I hope that you'll see and that will come through as you listen to this episode. Let me also recommend that you listen to my podcast at happiermarriagesecrets.com slash podcast, where you'll find all the past episodes that I've done and 
cover topics of many kinds, and you'll see the various different topics I've covered there at happiermarriagesecrets.com slash podcast. And so I want to encourage you to go there, bookmark that, and make sure you listen to that on any platform that you could listen to podcasts. You can find the Happier Marriage Secrets dot com um a happier marriage secrets podcast there and take me along with you in your pocket to your jogging to your driving to your exercise uh just to maybe just a leisure you can also have the podcast right there in your pocket with me okay now at the end of this video i'll share with you how to get access to some free resources and i'll tell you about oh, let's find this right here i'll tell you about um something i've been working on for quite some time you've heard me mention that and basically, I want to open this and show you what I have here, right? Are you ready? Okay, so finally, and now this is not ready yet for you to get. So I'll tell you on the next broadcast, the next video broadcast, how to get a your own pack of cards. Now, this is the happier, the connect strong, um, how to communicate, you know, in a fun and meaningful way with your spouse. And also, you'll be able to scan the um, you can able to scan the PDF that tells you how to use these cards and to maximize the use of these cards. And all these cards have questions and options on the back of the cards that you're able to interact with you, your partner. And right now, I have a limited amount that I'm going to be sending out to some people that comes in a little. Um, mesh bag like this but in the future car future i want to be able to have them in in the boxes so people can have them in the boxes and maybe both the boxes as well as their own um, mesh bag as well so i want to tell you more about that how you to be able to you know to make sure that you you subscribe to this this um video and this youtube channel so that you can hear more about what's happening in this regard now so let's dive into today's topic breaking free from the narcissist and take back control. Now, by the way, if you would like to have instant feedback on the state of your marriage, and you're just maybe in a place right now, you're just, man, my marriage is really feeling very challenging or just uncertain uncertainties about your marriage, let me encourage you to take the Happier Marriage Assessment Quiz because you can do that in less than 90 seconds and you'll have your score immediately within allowed to take, you know, you have access to download a PDF that explains what your scores will um, is. Watch a brief video that I share some more things about the, the um, sorry, you'll be able to take a video about where you, the, the categories your, your, your uh, marriage may fall into. And there's four categories or four zones that you could possibly fall into. And that is the blissful zone, the ambiguous zone, the, um, gridlock zone and the peril zone as so when the quiz you take the quiz and based upon the score you'll be brought to one of those zones and you will see what zone you're you fall into and then you have the pdf that explain that zone and then you'll have the next steps as what you can do to be able to then figure a way to navigate the zone that you may find yourself in so this video now is going to break uh, explore the strategies for maintaining your sanity while you're breaking free from the narcissist, the narcissist spouse that you have, and take control. As I mentioned before, I'm on a list of it's a five harmful um, outcomes that you might be experiencing, and then on each one, I'll share with you what you can do to basically take that control and maintain your sanity. So the first harmful outcome in a narcissistic relationship you might be experiencing, and is anxiety, right? Because you may be experiencing constant worry or fear about the actions. You know, you have anxiety around your your words. What you know, you have to be so careful about what you say, what you do, and you're just anxious. It's a heightened sense of anxiety because you never can tell what word, what action, how you may even your appearance may trigger your partner, and this leads to high level of anxiety and you feel so overwhelming overwhelmed right which can negatively impact your life in some cases you may have to be on medication for anxiety 
because of the experiences you're having in that relationship. So if you're experiencing anxiety as a result of a narcissistic spouse, let me encourage you to do what I believe is so important is self-care. Now, there's a caution here because when you're self-care in the way that I'm thinking and outlining, it also may trigger your partner even more because remember, their goal is to control. And when you're showing that you're you're still thriving, even though they are being you know, as, as mean, as an ogre as it can be, you're still going to maintain a sense of calm and steadiness. This may also drive them crazy because they're not getting the results that they used to get or want to get because you're practicing self-care, right? Through maybe prayer, um, prayer walks, maybe praying while you're in, interacting with them, meditation, uh, forms of relaxation, breathing exercises, reading a good book that really interests you, maybe going for a walk, uh, maybe treating yourself to manicure, manicure, a, a, a massage. So you're actually using what he or she is doing as a fuel to make certain that you take care of yourself. So you can be calm. Uh, you can calm your mind and reduce your anxiety. Now, like I said, it may cause your spouse to be more triggered because he or she realizes it's not working, right? But be prepared for that. But the more that person, ex, you know, um, kind of uh, uh, up their ante, the more you're wanting to actually self-care um, even more so, right? The second part is low self-esteem. See, as on your spouse, which you may have experienced, is who is narcissistic, is going to, at times, and have done, is belittle you, call you names. They're trying to make you feel less than. It's attacking your, your self-esteem, putting you down. And, and so it makes it very difficult to feel confident about yourself and about your abilities. So whenever you're feeling like your self-esteem is low, here's how, what you want to do is to think about the things you've accomplished and your strengths, maybe write them down, remind yourself of the things you've accomplished, um, maybe academically or financially or um, professionally. Remember, those things are important. So when you're feeling down and feeling like your self-esteem and your confidence is being, being at, under attack, facts is very important here. Bring, write those things down. Things you're proud of, your achievements. Maybe you have a trophy. Uh, maybe it's a, an award or a certificate. Pull that out. Remind yourself of those things. And while you're going through that time, it's important to also set boundaries, right? And prioritize your own needs and desires. It's self-care. Remember, now it's, you want to self-care your way in the self-esteem area. But this is the more practical things you're doing is pull out those certificates, pull out those diplomas, that award, that letter, that card that someone may have sent you and you're appreciating the things you've done. It will help your confidence and remind you that you are a person of worth and, and not as your partner has been describing you. Number three, depression. This is such a very important one and it happens so often because you may be depressing about your state of your relationship. And it's like, it's exhausting. It's exhausting to be constantly day in and day out, uh, day out to be going through what you're going through. The criticism, the belittling, the gaslighting, right? Uh, this is only, will eventually cause you to feel depressed, helpless and trapped. And when you feel helpless and trapped, it causes you to, de to depress, right? So if that is your experience or you're experiencing that, you can manage that, right? One of those ways is to seek support with, from loved ones or friends or from a therapist. Um, talking out your feelings can help you process and, and realize that you're not alone. Because you feel sometimes that you are alone and nobody understands or no one else going through what you're going through, but it's not true, right? You're not alone to those kind of experiences. So it's important to talk about, about this with loved ones or friends or with a therapist. And you can also engage in activities. Find things that, that excites you and make you happy, bring you a sense of purpose, right? As volunteering, uh, pursuing a hobby, do something that excites you. Again, this thing may drive him or her crazy because you're just kind of, you know, 
going meandering through the tulips. The more they do things, the more you're finding things that makes you happy. And here's what I find. Also, remember, never underestimate the power of prayer because God promises that he'll keep your mind steadfast. God will keep your mind in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on him. So the more he or she is acting up, the more God keeps you as a state of steadiness and peace and joy. And remember, joy is not about happiness. Joy is about a state of mind. And God said he will give that to you. So never underestimate the power of prayer and meditation and Bible reading in this time. Read the Psalms and be encouraged during this time because you want to fill yourself up spiritually, mentally, emotionally, um, and, um, also just academically, right? Maybe just finding, watching from YouTube and learning a new craft. Do something that excites you in that uh, moment. The, ne- the fourth thing that may be harmful, not maybe, is harmful, is a narcissistic spouse will try to isolate you from your family and your friends and try to guilt you and spend how you're spending time with them and not with him or her, right? And so you may feel lonely. They try to cut off and speak well, um, speak bad off and try to discourage you about these relationships. So it can, it can impact your, your mental health. So if you are experiencing loneliness, then I want to encourage you to reach out, like I said earlier, to friends and family members, find a support group, Get involved if you attend a church in group in church activities, serve, do something that that makes you feel purposeful, that you have a purpose, right? Volunteering, taking a class, a dance class, or something that will encourage, will cause you to learn a new trade or a new skill. You can meet new people. This will combat the feelings of isolation or as if you are alone and nobody is there for you, right? So these are, are things you want to do. Before I share with you the fifth harmful things, the harmful thing that can happen and what you may do about that, let me ask you to do three quick things, right? Three quick things. And this is what I'm just, I would say, you know, we call the word a gentleman's honor. I would say a couple or a spousal honor because I mean, I'm providing you with all this value, free information where I charge for that in my sessions. And I'm providing that with you for free I believe that I can ask you for a spousal honor, and that is to do three things. One, I want you to subscribe to this show, right? Smash the subscribe button right now. Hit the like button if you're uh, liking what you're hearing, and then also click on the notification bell so you'll be notified of all the new releases from this channel. You don't want to miss what's ahead. So make sure you do those three things, and I believe that I can say that as a spousal honor, I believe you can do that. And um, as a result of what you're getting from this channel, the, the fifth um, harmful thing that can happen with living with a narcissist is feelings of guilt, right? Because a narcissist loves to use guilt to control their partner. And, and, and they blame you for things, make it things that is not your fault, make you feel as if you're going crazy, doubting yourself because they're, they're guilting you. But you want to be able to stand up for yourself. And um, as I mentioned before, it may drive them even crazier. But you want to take that position and hold that position steadfast, right? Because you may have not done anything wrong, but they're going to find a way to turn things around. Even when they're wrong, they're going to try to deflect and turn it on you, make you feel guilty. I've heard so many different stories about this in different ways, but I want to show you what share with you what you can do when these things when they're doing this to you is hold your position. Don't take the bait. They're trying to bait you, and it's very hard to beat them at that. Right. So one way to deal with that is to practice self-compassion. Right. Self-compassion. Be compassionate to yourself and recognize that you're doing your best in a very difficult situation. So be, try to be kind to yourself. Don't buy into what the noise. Don't buy into all that they're saying. And seek support, as I mentioned before, from a therapist or a trusted friend to help you process these feelings of guilt. Because here's what happened. Guilt, the way I define guilt is guilt says you've done something wrong. And if in your mind and your heart and before God, you know you have not done anything wrong, then don't buy it. Don't take be responsible for their issue. Stand firm, silently pray, 
deep breathe, do some breathing exercise, not, you know, exhaling really loud, just quietly breathe and hold a sense of composure in this time. Like I said, all these things I'm sharing with you may trigger them even more, but be, be prepared for that, right? Expect that, hope for the best, expect them that it may, they may ramp up what they do, but just still hold your position and find a way to let a Nazi is get into you. Because what's going to happen is they're going to eventually find out it's no longer working and they feel ashamed because now it's like, it's almost like it's bouncing back on them. It's ricocheting back on them. Right. And so that's what you want to do. So in these five areas I mentioned, when they're trying to, when you're experiencing anxiety or low self-esteem or depression or isolation or guilt, do these things and see what difference it makes for you. This is how I believe you can take control of your life, right? Take control of your life. Like I mentioned before, as the title of this episode is, it's breaking free from the narcissist and take back control. And even without them knowing, that's what you're doing. Because you want to keep that close to your breast, close to your chest as you work on that. They don't have to know what you're doing, but eventually they'll know because they will see that it no longer works. And I find that what no longer works, people tend to give up. Let them give it up, okay? So I want to say thank you for taking time to listen, to watch. Remember that um, living with a narcissist can be challenging um, and it's essential to recognize the harm that it can cause. So you must be proactive and only realize you're responsible for two things, your action and your response to the action of your narcissistic spouse, okay? So before we go, make sure, again, you smash that subscribe button, hit the like button, and click on the notification bell. Share this with another person, another spouse who can be helped by this. Remember to listen to the Happier Marriage Secrets podcast by going to happiermarriagesecrets.com and get your free access to all the podcast episodes that I've done. And as I mentioned before, take the assessment quiz. All the links will be found in below, right in the description that follows this um, episode, this broadcast. And rem remember, next episode, I'll tell you more about how you can get your own pack of Connect Strong cards. So you and your spouse, maybe not the narcissist, may he, maybe he or she may not want to do this. And so um, it, but still, you never can tell. You never can tell that they may want to because these questions on options may give them a chance to, to talk through some things, but also give you a chance to talk through some things because the, the, the rules of how to get the maximum impact will tell you what to do every time you open this deck of cards. So I'll tell you more about that next time. Okay. So with that said, my friend, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Click the links below. And make sure you take the quiz and get the gauge and gauge the state of your marriage. With that said, let's go and make marriages happier again. God bless. And I'll see you on the next video broadcast. See you soon. Okay. Thank you.